What's up? And welcome back to Cover Two Wit. Be woo. Earl knows it all, and as you can see, flying solo today. We had a little bit of a scheduling conflict this week, but we could not leave you empty-handed. It is the end of the 2023 NFL season. All of the fallout from the season. We got to get into it, man. The playoff picture is set. We got playoff games Saturday, Sunday, and Monday this week. Super wild card weekend. And we got to talk about all of the disappointments that happened this year in the NFL. And it's Black Monday, man. You know what that means. We got some firings to discuss as well. All of that and more today on Cover 2 with Beat Woo. Earl knows it all. You guys lock in. Make sure you do me a big favor before we do anything, though. Hit that like button, man. Subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed. We've been stuck at the same number of subscriptions for a while, man. It's time to get that up. Run it up. Tell your friends, man. This is the best show covering the NFL in the world. I stand on that. Like they say, we standing on business. I stand on that. We are the best show covering the NFL. Most entertaining. Two brothers that know a lot about football, man. And we building a community here. So make sure you subscribe and Share the video with everyone that you know, man. Tell a friend, tell a headie. Y'all know what we like to say. Let's get right into today's show, man. And we got to start with the NFL playoff picture finally being clear now. We know what has happened. We know all 14 now participants. It used to be 12. It's 14 now. Shout out to Roger Goodell for adding those extra teams, making things a little bit more interesting now with that super wild card weekend. And uh, let's look. let's take a look here and see exactly – what that playoff picture looks like. So as you can see, the Super Bowl this year, of course, is in Vegas, man, 2024. What a beautiful place for it to be at, right? And uh, we go to the NFL.com just to see. And if you've been following, man, right now, the two teams that I picked, and we'll have to get with B-Woo next week when the playoffs start to confirm, because I can't really remember who he picked as his two teams to represent the AFC and NFC. But one of my teams... The Baltimore Ravens, man, they are looking uh, very good. They have your boy looking real smart, man. They, are, of course, are the number one seed. Uh, we'll get into what happened yesterday with Buffalo and Miami. Of course, Buffalo ends up being the two seed. Now, coming into this final weekend, Buffalo could have either been the two seed, the seven seed, or eliminated totally. They end up with the two seed. Of course, we talked about has the window closed on Buffalo. We had that discussion when we did our AFC preview. It does not appear that that's the case. They may be right in the position that they want to be in. They don't necessarily have to, well, they won't have to travel to Kansas City at all. So they got that on their side. Uh, they may have to see Mahomes, though. You never know. But um, they'll at least have to do it in Buffalo. Kansas City, of course, is the number three seed. The Texans, shout out to D'Amico Ryans. Shout out to my guy, CJ Stroud. Oh, how I wish some way, somehow the Falcons could have traded up and gotten you because maybe I still would be a Falcon fan. That could have happened, but uh, they did not. And Houston is the beneficiary of that, man. They are the number four seed. They win the AFC South. The Cleveland Browns, who clinched a couple weeks ago, are the five seed. They will travel to Houston, which we'll get into a little bit later. The Dolphins end up being the six seed, man. They had everything in front of them. They lose to the Baltimore. They could have clinched home field throughout. The last couple weeks, they lose to the Baltimore. Then they lose to the Buffalo, and they fall to the six seed and the Steelers. My guy, Mike Tomlin, another winning season. All he does is have winning seasons. All you folks that was on Twitter, all you haters, all you bigots, I will say that. Yes, you bigots who were uh, saying that Mike Tomlin, it was time for him to go. He He's wearing the woke shirt. He needs to care more about his team winning. He did it again, 10-7. and seven. What else do you know, man? Doing it with no kind of quarterback play. Doing it with an offense that was uh, very putrid at times, man. But he just finds a way to win. That's what Mike Tomlin does. He's the representative as the number seven team in the AFC. And then if we look at the NFC playoff picture, of course, San Fran clinched home field throughout a couple weeks ago as well. They rested their guys on this past weekend. The Cowboys end up with the two seed. They beat the Commanders, and, and I guess I'll still say my Eagles. We're going to get into the Eagles, man. <laughs> they fall to the five seed. Of course, the Lions end up being the three seed. Now, the Lions are the team, we talked about this, that was probably screwed the most out of this, man, because you look at that game they had on uh, New Year's Eve, I think it was, right? They beat, or Christmas Eve, actually, they beat the line. I mean, they apparently appear to have a two-point conversion to beat the Cowboys in that game. However, it gets called a penalty for an ineligible receiver. You know all the fallout from that. And we talked about how big will that play. These two teams could meet in the playoffs again, and now they'll have to go to Dallas and prove that that win that they felt they had was legit. We'll see what happens with Dan Campbell uh, and the Lions. The Buccaneers. Buccaneers get 
a victory, <laughs> nine to nothing over the Carolina Panthers. Hey, it doesn't matter how you do it, man. You just got to do it. They win with a series of field goals and they clinch NFC South for the third straight year. Uh, they do that, of course, without Tom Brady this time. The Eagles, like I said, my Eagles, I guess I still call them right now. We're not going to give up on them yet. Are the five seed, although they are pretty much left for dead. Rams, a surprisingly good team, man. This is a team I said we got to look out for. They end up as the sixth seed, and the Packers beat out the Saints, beat out the Vikings, beat out all the other teams, the Bears, the Falcons, who were uh, all trying to get that last playoff spot. And uh, they end up the seventh seed. So those are your participants in the, in the uh, playoffs this year. We'll get into the matchups as well, kind of what we think about them. Um, myself and B-Woo, I will we'll put together some stuff to tell you what our predictions are for these playoffs as well, man. But um, I, I, just looking at the fallout from this final game of the season and how some of these teams fell, like we just talked about, the Eagles falling, what happened with that Lions and, and Cowboys game that had seeding implications? The the Dolphins having everything in front of them. We didn't. I didn't even just talk about Jacksonville. Jacksonville at one point, me and B. Wu did an episode and talked about is Jacksonville the team to beat in the NFL? They were eight and two. They went on this great run. They got Trevor Lawrence, the boy, the babe, the prince, whatever you want to call them, and uh, they win one more game for the rest of the season and are not in the playoffs, man. So. Uh, it, 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 things can turn quickly in the NFL. The NFL stands for not for long, and it can change from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. And you saw that this year has been a very, very interesting season, man. And, and we want to thank you guys for joining us every single week to go through this, uh, watch us react and recap what happened each week, man. And uh, thank you guys, like I said, and, and be sure to tell a friend, man, like, subscribe. Don't be a hater, you know what I'm saying, man? Tell somebody about what we're doing over here. It's the best NFL content in the world. You see it, Hilltop Media Group, Cover 2. Also, check out Earl Knows It All as well, man. We're doing some big things in 2024. But let me get back into Black Monday now. Now, if you've been following this show and you have heard me and B-Woo go back and forth about what's going to happen with the Falcons, what's going to happen with their coach, uh, about four weeks ago now, there was a report that came out that said, Depending upon the way the season progresses these last three weeks or four weeks of the season, we'll determine if Arthur Smith will keep his job or not. Now, B. Wu was adamant in his uh, declaration that the Falcons weren't going to get rid of him. They were going to give him another chance. And I, I, he almost convinced me a little bit, man, because I, I said, well, this is Arthur Blank we're talking about, man. And he did the same thing with Mike Smith, did the same thing with Dan Quinn. He likes to hold on to these coaches uh, for a little too long. but. Um, if you've been following Black Monday, the first coach to go at 12.02 midnight, right after the season finale, was Arthur Smith. Let go after three years. And the crazy thing is, man, um, it's probably of his own doing or maybe fun. No, but it's just an organizational thing, if you ask me, man. And, you know, the reports now are that <laughs> um, Rich McKay and Arthur Blank will head the search for a new head coach, man. You hear, you say, who who could who could Atlanta target as his replacement? And the first name that keeps popping up and that I've seen is Bill Belichick, 71-year-old Bill Belichick, losing his coach of all time, um, you know, trying to become the winningest coach of all time if he can continue working. We don't know if he's been let go yet as of this recording. He's scheduled to meet with uh, the Kraft family and determine if he's going to still be uh, in New England or not. But, um Let's hope the Falcons don't do that, man. <laughs> now, this is an interesting thing because if you've been following the show, I told you I changed my allegiance from the Falcons this past offseason to the Philadelphia Eagles. And the reason I did that was because I just can't continue to, um, you know, support a team that is has no direction, doesn't seem to know how to get out of his own way, and doesn't listen to what the fans are saying as far as, hey, this is not a good fit. Well, I guess Arthur Blank kind of saw what happened after you lose, uh, you know, you, you go up 14 to seven in the season finale against the division rival and you proceed to get blown out and outscore 41 to three the rest of that game. Uh, after you get beat down in Chicago the prior week, uh, 37 to 17 by over 20 points, you know, after you wet the bed against the Carolina Panthers, who at the time only had one victory. You lose that game nine to seven. You had everything right in front of you to win this division easily at that. 
and they just fell apart, man. And, you know, uh, I've seen reports that, you know, guys like Calais Campbell and some of the other players, uh, Lindstrom, I think, uh, one of the offensive linemen, a lot of the guys in the locker room said they like playing for Arthur Smith. And, you know, but this is a results business. He was 21 and 30, I think it was his record, uh, in his three years in the uh, in Atlanta. So, you know, it, it remains to be seen. i uh, seen the name Eric Bieniemy come up. I think the defensive line, I mean, uh, court, defensive coordinator for the, the Lions is also in there. Uh, I saw the defensive coordinator for the Panthers. I can't pronounce his name, but uh, he has been mentioned as well. Uh, I think that would be a bad idea. The guy who I've also seen his name, and he'll be coaching, maybe depending on what time you're watching this, in the national championship tonight is uh, Jim Harbaugh. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Jim Harbaugh. Now, a lot of reports that he's going to L.A. to go coach the Chargers. Uh, like, that's kind of a deal that's under the table already. He hasn't commented on his future. He's, you know, dodged those questions during a lot of his press availability for the national championship game. But Jim Harbaugh is a proven guy in the NFL. Um, he wears out his welcome maybe a little bit, but uh, he's proven to win. And he can win with a, a quarterback that can run and make some moves. If you're looking still to try to make a move for Justin Fields, the most success Harbaugh had was with Colin Kaepernick, right? So that's a situation where, you know, if you can get the right pieces, I don't know that Harbaugh is probably going to make it or even Bill Belichick for that matter, because <clears throat> both of those guys are going to want a lot of power. And the power structure in Atlanta is, Arthur Blank, Rich McKay, then maybe Fontenot, maybe, <laughs> and whatever head coach that comes in. So you got a lot of cooks or chefs in the, you know, tribe or cooks in the kitchen or whatever you want to have, uh, call it. But to me, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a very interesting situation. Arthur Blank has the money. He will pay for a big name guy. But do you want to deal with, uh, a meddling owner maybe or owner that is involved uh, rich mckay who definitely has his ear who's been around his organization for almost 20 years now if not 20 years and he of course is um you know over 20 years probably now and he has failed his way up the ladder <laughs> but because of his standing in the nfl uh, as you know family name his dad of course former head coach at in tampa um and rich mckay has been in the league his entire life as well so uh, I don't know how he still, and, and this is what I was almost, and that's what I'll say. I just forgot about this. I was almost back on board after the Arthur Smith firing until I saw the report that said <coughs> Arthur Blank and Rich McKay are going to head up the search with some input from Terry Fontenot, the GM. I have no idea why Rich McKay would have any bearings in this decision besides the fact that he's Arthur Smith's guy. I mean, excuse me, Arthur Blank's guy. And I, I talked about this with B. Wu previously, and I said, I know we're blaming Tyler, Tyler Haneke. I mean, we're blaming Desmond Ritter. We're blaming Arthur Smith. You know, we've blamed Dan Quinn. We've blamed a lot of people. There's one constant, well, two constants if you count Rich McKay, but really, you know, leadership starts all the way at the top. It's Arthur Blank. Arthur Blank has been too loyal to Rich McKay, in my opinion. Um... He was too loyal to Dimitrov and let him stay around for too long. And it's just, he has to hire the football people and get out of the way, man. And, you know, he hasn't been as visible or as uh, vocal as he was early on in his ownership, but he still, you still see him on the sidelines. He was at the press conference yesterday when Arthur Smith was there giving his last press conference. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a thing, man, that for me, I can't jump back on board until Arthur Blank is no longer the owner, man. I think that's what it's going to have to be because I don't foresee anything changing until that's the case. So uh, it remains to be seen. I'll keep an eye out on who's the coach uh, going forward for the Atlanta Falcons. Now, there was, of course, another firing as well. Uh, Ron Rivera, after four years, is done in D.C. New ownership group there with Josh Harris, who's also the owner of the Philadelphia 76ers. Magic Johnson is a part of the ownership group as well. What do they do? They are in the Bill Belichick business as well. So it's a lot of teams that want Belichick. Um, it's a lot of teams. That's going to be a lot of people's first call probably. He hasn't even the, – the New England Patriots haven't even made a decision on him yet. I think both sides probably want to divorce, but we'll see if that happens. Um, you know, and 
what's the what's the more attractive job? I guess you got Carolina that's out there. You got uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. You have the Atlanta Falcons. You have the Washington uh, Commanders. Um, you got the Chargers as well. You know there there's some. Each team has its own uh, selling point. I guess you could say Falcons got a lot of weapons. You know they got an owner who will spend money. Um, he'll meddle a little bit though, like I just said. And you know you got a fan base that is hungry for a winner. You got the L.A. Chargers who have a quarterback who may be the best quarterback situation with Justin Herbert uh, out of all of those teams. But you got a fan base who cares nothing about you in L.A. and no support there. So, you know, do you want to go there? The Spanos will probably give you control of the ownership group there. Um, in D.C., you got a new owner that can kind of be shaky. You never know how that works, man. But Josh Harris, I think, is going to spend the money in that ownership group. And D.C. has a story, franchise history. They've won three Super Bowls under Joe Gibbs. You know, they got a fan base that will uh, will root for them, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term. And then, uh, of course, like I said, Carolina, who has a guy who's number one pick in the NFL last year, but maybe he shouldn't have been the number one pick when you look at it now, based on some of the success of the other guys who went after him. So just, you know, selling points, we'll have to see. And they have an owner, too, that's a newish owner that, has fired a lot of coaches already in his first couple of years as the owner. Uh, had a, a spat with a fan recently. Like, it's, you know, clown shows all around maybe, man. So you kind of got to figure out what you want to do if you're a top candidate. Um, it'll be interesting to see in the next couple of days what happens with that. But if you're a Falcon fan, let me know what you think. I know I've been online and kind of reading since last night, kind of getting the feel for what was going to happen. If it was going to go down, if Arthur Smith was actually going to be fired, that does finally happen. You guys comment below. Tell me what you think about the Falcons going forward. Do you think Arthur Smith should have got one more year? Are you happy today that he was fired? Are you? I saw some people saying, hey, thank the Saints and the Panthers, and you never thought you'd hear a Falcon fan thanking the Saints for spanking them. But, hey, if it ends in this result, I guess maybe you're happy about that. Um, but tell us what you think, man. Let us know uh, what you think. Now, we're going to take a brief uh, break here, and when we get back, we'll be discussing – the disappointments and dismay, man, of this 2023 season. A couple teams I want to call to the carpet and talk about how this season has went and some of them the season is still continuing, so how it could go forward. They got a chance to maybe make that frown turn back upside right. We'll be right back. Now, welcome back. The cover two will be Woo. The Earl knows it all, man. I'm flying solo, like I said. Shout out to my, my guy, my brother, B. Woo. Um... We got some stuff to talk about, though, man. It's been a disappointing season for me as a football fan as I decided to go into my, uh, you know, open up my heart for a new team, man. I said, who is going to be the team that I'm going to root for this year? Because it won't be the Falcons. And I, I looked around the league, the landscape. I didn't want to choose a team like the Chiefs because, you know, they're a championship team. It was some teams I just never could root for. Never going to be a Cowboys fan. Never anybody in the NFC South. Um, you know, certain teams that just have pedigree that, you know, I didn't want to jump on that bandwagon. The Steelers, you know, or someone like that. So I kind of settled in on a team that had a quarterback that I liked a lot. A guy that was humble, that had had some success, had beat adversity. You know, a city that's a tough, hard-nosed city. Got a good group of fans. And I chose the Philadelphia Eagles, man. And for about the first 11 weeks of the season, although it was a little shaky, things were looking good for your boy, man. We were 10 and 1. We come off a big victory against uh, the Buffalo Bills. We had the 49ers right in our sight. And, you know, everything was on the table. Coming off an NFC championship, we're right in the mix. And then all hell broke loose, man. <laughs> uh, you know, losing. Five of your last six games is not a recipe for success. And uh, when you start talking about disappointing seasons, they're in the playoffs. But, you know, I know some people may say a team like the Falcons. I never thought the Falcons were going to do anything. Um, maybe Jacksonville can be in there. We'll talk about them as well. But to me, the number one disappointment has been the Philadelphia Eagles, man. They had everything in front of them. And I knew they had a tough streak. A tough uh, road of games down the stretch. They had, you know, Cowboys, Buffalo, uh, San Fran, and the Cowboys again. And even after that, they lost some of those games that they shouldn't have lost, including 
the season finale, which, you know, it didn't really matter because the Cowboys are going to run away with the division anyway, but they were getting beat before that was even the case. So, uh, yeah, it's just a disappointing end to the season. And I'll say this, man, my heart it was in it with the Falcons, right? Because I grew up watching the Falcons. I'm from Atlanta. I root for the Atlanta teams. I don't got to take this mess with Philadelphia, man. Like, I ain't going to be rooting for y'all when I can just choose to root for you and um, y'all do this. So, y'all got a, a week to get your stuff together, man, or I'm going to be on the first thing smoking. And it's another team that's looking very beautiful to me. It's a team that actually, if you really truly know me, and I got some people that can vouch for this, I've always been a fan of since 2000. That's the Baltimore Ravens, man. But I'm not jumping ship just yet. No, not yet. I'm still going to see what happens with the Eagles, man. They got a Monday night game. The first uh, – uh, they have a Monday night game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa to close out wild card weekend, man. And, you know, that game really can go either way, man. You can't say that you trust the Eagles to beat anybody at this point. So, very difficult to say that, hey, I know for a fact the Eagles are going to win this game. But we'll see what happens with that, man. We'll, we'll uh, get a chance to take a look and see if they can right the ship. Uh, Jalen Hurts has dealt with a bevy of injuries. I think he messed his finger up last week as well. So just a lot to kind of deal with, man. That was a, a huge disappointment this year. Another disappointment, the Chiefs, although they're the third seed, the Chiefs usually have the Kansas City Inv Invitational every January. Last week in January is held at Arrowhead. And uh, this year they struggle, man. They will be on the road for the first time if they are able to advance in the playoffs uh, here very soon. So we'll see what happens with them, man. Um, you know, it seems like the loss of Tyreek Hill and coupled with the loss of Eric B enemy as well, I think had a little bit more of an effect than people thought it would have, you know, as much as Andy Reed, big red is the mastermind of the, you know, the thing. Um, I think they're missing Eric B enemy, man. And they definitely miss Tyreek Hill as well. Uh, those receivers there leave a lot to be desired. So we'll see what happens with both of those teams. They still have everything in front of them, but you never know, man. You never know. Uh, the other team that we will say is a disappointment, Miami Dolphins, man. You guys had a chance for the first seed with the last two weeks of the season left. You get beat down, badly abused by Baltimore, and then you lose again to a Buffalo Bills team that you had everything right in front of you to win that division, be the two seed at the very least. You fall all the way down now to the sixth seed. And uh, you got to go to Kansas City and play in zero-degree weather now as a Florida team. Mm, that's probably going to be a problem. So, yeah, I think uh, disappointment could, will, will come for them as well, man, and kind of hedge my bets as far as Kansas City because I think they will beat Miami in that game. It's not my prediction just yet, but – I have a chance to look over it and let you guys know about that. But just looking at it immediately, the Dolphins are in a world of trouble right now, man. As good as uh, uh their coach has been and as good as their offense was, they put up 70 points in the game. They're fun offense with all those weapons. They got A-Chain, Mozart, uh, Waddle, Wilson, of course, the Cheetah, Tyreek Hill. But it landed them in the sixth seed when they could have been the one seed. So, yeah, man, now everything goes back through Baltimore. Uh, they got to go to Kansas City, like I said, playing zero-degree weather in Arrowhead. I don't see that working out well for them. They they just did the same thing last year, having to travel to Buffalo in the cold and got beat in the playoffs. So not a recipe for uh, success for them, man. And another team that we have to put in that disappointment uh, place is, of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars, man. Eight and two, we talked about this uh they were frauds man you know i think everybody was on the bandwagon because they had that big come from behind win last year in the playoffs against the inconsistent los angeles chargers and staley should have been fired then but he kept his job but you know we maybe gave this team too much hope and love because of that but they started the season eight and two they started one and two and then went on this great six game win streak uh, starting with winning those games in London <laughs> over the Falcons and Steelers. And then they just got kept hot. But, you know, I know Lawrence got hurt a little bit during the season, Trevor Lawrence. So, you know, maybe you give him a little pass for that. But even with all that said, on the final day of the season, all you have to do is beat Ryan Tannehill and the Tennessee Titans. And you're in the playoffs. And they could not 
figure out a way to do that. And that's extremely disappointing, man. I know Jacksonville fans have to be looking at this and saying, like, people were saying Jacksonville was going to kind of be the team on the come. They got a lot of weapons with Kurt and uh, they picked up Ridley. And, you know, you got Etienne back there running back. And you got Trevor Lawrence and Super Bowl winning coach and Doug Peterson and all this stuff. And it got you hot garbage at the end of the season, man. They finished the season the way they did. So, yeah, that's that's a tough pill to swallow if you are a Jacksonville Jaguar fan. Uh, I'm sure you maybe had high hopes. And definitely at one point in the season, you were feeling like we may be the one seed. We see everyone else struggling. We could take this thing in for the season to end that way. But the number one disappointment is, and it has to be, <laughs> y'all know we kind of are a Falcon-centric show, man. To end your career in this manner right here, man, Give me one second to pull up this clip and let you guys see. Arthur Arthur Smith will forever be remembered <laughs> in infamy, I guess, if you want to say, by this last display of goofiness um, at the end of his coaching tenure with the Atlanta Falcons. Chris Allen scored a touchdown at the end. He is coming. He said, what are you doing? And he's going at Dennis Allen. You can read his lips and you know. And I think he's got a right, by the way, to do that. The Saints did not. So there you see Arthur Smith uh, going off on Dennis Allen. And if you aren't familiar with this, I want to end the show on a little light note, man. Uh, we'll let Jameis take away what happened while Arthur Smith was a little upset, man. Jameis, take it away for us. So this is Jameis Winston explaining uh, the final play of the game or one of the final plays of the game. The uh the Falcons throw up what should have been a pick six, but Tyra Matthew stops at the one yard line. And um it looks like the Saints are gonna take a knee to go out in victory formation. But Jameis Winston and the old offensive lineman decide, hey, let's get our guy Jamal Williams a touchdown, man. He had 17 last year, led the league. He has zero this year with us. Let's get him in the end zone, man. And um, that's why you saw the the response that Arthur Smith had. Score was 41 to 17. The game was over with. Uh, but We'll continue to let Jameis explain what happened here, man. Well, I apologize to DA yeah. because the play was was victory. Yeah. Uh, but I also explained to DA that it was a team decision. Yeah. And uh, and I think when you have the a team morale, and I asked the guys, I say, guys, like, what do you, what do you want to do? Yeah. We know how much Jamal means to this team, and and I understood from yeah. DA's perspective. So I I, I give him that. Yeah. I, I love the facial expressions from Jameis, man. Jameis is content gold, first and foremost, man. You gotta love Jameis. He's a funny guy. Um, the thing I will say, and I've seen a lot of backlash now from Jameis on this, from Shannon Sharp uh, on Club Shay Shay, and then he uh, repeated that again on first take, how oh, he should be cut. He's not a winner. This is why he's a loser, all that stuff. Can we just enjoy the gift that is Jameis Winston? This is the New Orleans Saints we're talking about, man. Never had nothing, never going to be nothing. Always is what they is, and that's just sorry as dirt. So, why are you being so serious about this, man? Look, let us have our fun. Okay, Shannon Sharp. Jameis uh, explaining his way that, hey, you know, DA called to play in, but uh, we wanted to build team morale, and, you know, we won't get him in the end zone. So that's on us. It wasn't his fault. I love Jameis, man. This guy is great. <laughs> uh, it's nowhere in the world the Saints better cut Jameis Winston, man. He is a team morale guy. And for me, you know, he's the best, most redeeming thing that has ever happened to the New Orleans Saints, man. So uh, that was a big kerfuffle there, man. A lot of a lot of talk about that, man. And uh, Jameis is just, he's a hilarious guy, man. You know, whenever I'm down and I need something to pick me up, a little pick me up. I like to watch the videos of Jameis doing his workouts, uh, working his hips and stuff like that, man. Or just clips of him talking, man, eating W's. All that stuff is hilarious, man. He is a, a funny, funny guy, man. And it's, it's unintentionally funny. That's the great thing about it. But yeah, man, that's that was uh that's the way we that's the way the Arthur Smith regime in Atlanta ends. Um, it's a disappointment, but you know, the sun will come up tomorrow, man. It's Black Monday right now. Uh the sun will come out on Tuesday and uh, you know, in Whoville. Hopefully things will be better, man. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for watching our show today. Thank you for watching our season with us, man. Like I said at the top of the show, share this video with a friend, man. Tell them about Cover 2 with B. Wu Earl Knows It All, the number one show covering the NFL. 
I stand on that. I put us up against anybody. I put us up against NFL today. I put us up against Shannon Sharp. I put us up against First Take. Whoever, man, undisputed. We are the most entertaining, best show on the earth covering the NFL. Tell me something different, man. Do yourself a favor, man. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share. Cut your notifications on because you don't want to miss anything that we're dropping. We will be back next week with myself and B-Woo. We're going to give y'all the rundown on who we have in these wild card games. Wild card weekend is getting to the nitty gritty, baby. The NFL playoffs are here. Strap up. Let's go. <laughs> you guys have a great rest of your week. We will see you next week.